and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Irrational Confidence Podcast. We're talking college basketball, and is it is the final four. It is four teams that have navigated their way through the bracket. They've avoided every single minefield, every single area they could be tripped up, and they're finally on their way, a chance at a championship. But I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. NCAA himself, the showstopper, the main eventer. Fresh, fresh, how you doing, buddy? Apps, I can't believe we're already all four. What happened to opening weekend? You know, the playing game, selection Sunday, seemed like, what, four months ago? Um, all the excitement, you know, the whole goalkeeper and Oakland making their run. That was a great, you know, what, 48 hours, maybe? Um, I, but, hey. We are here at the final four. This is where the championship is crowned. All four teams have, you know, cut down a net and they're a region, but now it's the only one. The net cutting. Um, four cool stories, too. So it's a really exciting time in these games. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a wild tournament ride. It's been so much fun. We had our first sponsor along the way. So, again, special thanks for Champ Sports Pools throughout this entire March Madness for sponsoring the podcast. Great job out of them. Don't have much more of a read out of there. Just wanted to, you know, say, send a shout out to them and saying thank you for sponsoring us as well. But before we go on any further here, folks, we're almost to draft season. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, get notified every single time we drop a new episode. We got a full first round mock draft. We got teams breaking them down, what they need in the draft. We got to go back and re-record a few of those as well because all sorts of craziness happened in the NFL. We're not here to talk about the NFL. We're here to talk about the NCAA tournament. Fresh, we got the first game of the night. It is going to be on the South Midwest matchup. It's NC State versus Purdue. NC State got here along the way. They wound up being Texas Tech, beat Oakland in the second round. Then they knocked off Marquette. Then they knocked off Duke. Made it to the Final Four. Purdue has rolled in as much as we've doubted them. Finally, is it possible? The sweet losing to a 16 seed, the curse has been lifted. The Purdue Boilermakers, they beat Grambling, Utah State, Gonzaga, and knocked off Rocky Top Tennessee to make it there. At time of record here, Fresh, we got a nine and a half point favorite for the Purdue Boilermakers here. Fresh, this is an exciting game. What you got going on for Purdue, NC State? Well, first off, let's start with NC State. Um, what what heck of a run. If you go back and you know, face some tournament, hitting the three, you know, Virginia missing a free throw, you know, like, what gets you here? And it just feels like a team of destiny at some point. Um, the way they just they put games together, they scrounged, they fought, they battled. And you take down better rivals to cut down that's the whole situation. Beat North Carolina, an AC title game, even really to play yourself in a tournament. And you take down Duke to win the region and to go to the Final Four. Um, exercising a lot of demons. I know um, I grew up next to the Rawls family in, in my hometown, and I've lived there. My family's been there next to them for 35, 36 years now. And they're NC State grads. And I texted my buddy, you know, and asked about what dad was his dad. He's retired, and the Wolfpack are in two Final Fours right now, men's and women's. His dad is living life. They are enjoying it. They are talking so much trash to all their Carolina and Duke friends right now. Um, NC State's on top of the world. Just the, the vibe that the Wolfpack party is bringing right now is pretty amazing. Um, I got friends that live in Raleigh, and they are saying it's been just one massive street party for the past, you know, three weeks. And it's just it's an affair. And they're riding the wave right now. You know, DJ Horn at guard, but obviously DJ Burns, uh, who's just dominating, does not look like a, an uh, NBA player. It looks like an offensive tackle. Um, and there's rumors potentially the NFL scouts want to bring him in for a, 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 a quote on pro day. Um, he just he gets it done. He loves playing ball. The guys are feeling each other. They're making plays. Everyone on the court is, is chipping in defensively and offensively. And it's just a full team effort. Just, the, the momentum that is carried to the Wolfpack right now, um, they can't lose. If they lose, who cares? Um, they are here and they are making it happen and they are just rolling with it. And this is really something special to see. You know, you mentioned it in our, in our initial re- our region preview about Jimmy V, Jim Valvano, 41 years ago, taking the Wolfpack, beating Houston, beating the five slam of Jamie team and winning the national championship. Um, 
could this be the same kind of Cinderella story? Because if they have to do it, they've already taken care of a pretty long list of other, you know, school squads so far. They have to come in here and take down Zach Eady and Purdue and then potentially take down Alabama or UConn in the title game. It can be done. This team is done. They've shown they can play. Um, but it's really to see, see how they continue to keep feeding off this momentum. On the other side, um, and actually one last thing, 83 was last time NC State was in the final four. So you have that kind of magic still around from that first item. The other side, Purdue, first final four since 1980. You know, Gene Cady's had some teams there in, in uh, West Lafayette for years. They just couldn't find a way to get it done. You know, Robbie Hummel and Matt Painter both played, you know, in, the, in that, that system. They just couldn't find a way to get a great team to be, you know, a, a legendary. Here they are. Um, they had Zach Eady get a lot of extra um, kid glove treatment in the lane. Um, if you step on the court, you're probably going to get a foul call in immediately just because you're in within five feet of him. You should know it by now, folks. It's not going to be anything different. It's been going on this all season. It's been going on the Big Ten tournament. It's been going on last year. It's been going on this year. It's there. Everyone sees it. He gets calls, and somehow he does not get as many fouls called on him for action. Deal with it. You're going to have to. It's just going to happen. Um, but it will be interesting to see how two superstars, if you will, I'll use those air quotes, Edie and Burns down low battling in a game. We haven't kind of seen that big, big matchup with that kind of eyes and attention and prowess. So maybe that swing some of them and some of those calls don't get made and they let them actually play it out a little bit. That's going to be what's really going to be, you know, to be seen because the foul differential from Purdue compared to other people I've been has been pretty significant and that's really swayed the ball game and allowed momentum to sort of be either stopped or allow Purdue to keep scoring without the clock moving. Purdue's got a lot better shooting than three and it's kind of helped out her right balance. Um, but Edie's Ability to manipulate the foul situation has really been a, a serious um, factor in their run. They're still a great basketball team and they're there. But how that plays out between him and Burns, how the situation rolls, um, and how the game is called between the two of them will really uh, drive it. Um, I, I, want, I want to take Purdue because they have the veteran team, but you know what? I'm going to ride the wave. We're going to go with Wolf Pack Party, NC State, pull off another upset and go play for a national championship. Um, it's just going to be fun to watch him as we keep hanging with it. Fresh Survive in Advance is one of my favorite of the ESPN 30 for 30s. I've always been a huge Jim Valvano fan. He had just such a unique personality. He's a guy who could make you laugh uh, and really understood basketball better than a lot of people probably ever give him credit for because he, he became a character. And it's crazy to think that this Wolfpack program has not been to a final four since 1983. And then you take a look at everything that they've done. They force turnovers. They, they kind of protect the basketball themselves. They're, they're not a great three point shooting team. DJ Horn has been really good from behind the arc. That really is about it. And then you have Burns on the inside. Take a look at Purdue. Purdue does turn the ball over a little bit. A little bit more than NC State as well, but they shoot the three so much better. Brandon Smith and uh, Lance Jones gets rolling, man. It, it's going to be lights out for NC State. Everyone's going to put the focus on Edie versus uh, Burns underneath their fresh. And the best comparison I can take from this is, folks, this is WrestleMania 3. And it is WrestleMania season. Fresh is laughing at me, but uh, any I'm just I know where you're going with this. I'll, I'll tack on later. It it is the un, unstoppable force versus the ir, uh, unmovable object here, and it's Andre versus Hogan. It is Zach Eady versus DJ Burns, and these two. Guys are going to bang underneath. If you're a guy like me who enjoys post basketball and get especially two guys who are going back and forth underneath as well, this is the type of game to watch for you. I like NC State in the points. I don't like NC State to win this ball game here, Fresh. I like, I, I'm going with Purdue. And the reason I'm going with Purdue is because I, I'm going to eat some crow on this one. I'm forcing myself to eat crow on it. You know, people are going to go back to the teams that are going to make an early exit. They're going to listen back and say, you know, you have to call out Purdue. You're right. I did. 
I did. I said never to trust the Purdue Boilermakers. And because I said that, I am going to wear it like a badge of honor, basically saying I'm wrong and I'm going to pick them the entire way rest of the go. Well, we'll see what they do against UConn here or Alabama, but I'm going to pick them in this game. I'm going Purdue over NC state. I think Edie's going to be too much for him. And again, it's, it's tough to guard a seven foot four guy here fresh. I mean, yeah, you say he might get a few calls his way, but man, that's not an easy test for anybody. Yeah. We're going to know how tall Burns really is. You know, they say he's six nine in the book. Maybe he's actually six seven. We're gonna, we're gonna get a chance to see how that height really matches up compared to reality versus what's written down in the in the stat sheet. Uh, it was kind of funny. You forget WrestleMania, folks. If you don't follow us on Twitter, I kind of even before the NC State Duke game was over, I tweeted out the picture of Gonzalo, uh, Godzilla and King Kong just fighting out. That's exactly what Burns and Eddie is gonna be. It's the two monsters down low of superhuman strength going after. Him. Absolutely. All right, Fresh, the other matchup of Saturday is at 845. It is the Alabama Crimson Tide. They are 11 point and a half point underdog versus the Yukon Huskies. Yukon, the number one overall seed. They beat Stetson round one, Northwestern round two, San Diego State round three, and Illinois round four. They have just completely <laughs> destroyed everyone in their path. The closest game has been against Northwestern so far, which is wild to see. And they won that 30-0 run on Illinois, which was just ridiculous. And Alabama kind of went against Charleston and then faced off Grand Canyon. They upset in UNC and then wound up face off against Clemson. And they have gotten themselves into the Final Four here. Fresh, like I said, this is an 11.5-point spread in this game. I got my personal thoughts here, but I'll turn it over to you first. I think the one good thing for Alabama um, is they are, at the end of the regular season, averaging over 90 points a game, which led the nation. Um, This team scores. They shoot really, really well from beyond the arc. They score in transition. Um, That ability to shoot the basketball at a high rate and successfully is going to create opportunities for them. They're going to have to go to compete, and they're going to score a lot to beat UConn. UConn is a, a machine. I mean, you want a 30 point run against somebody in November, December, you know, a, a money game, whatever. Who cares? You're in a regional final versus a, a year long top 10 team. Illinois has been in the top 10 almost all year long against Shannon, Damask, um, and, 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 a, and a host of other Illini players who have been scoring at a pretty solid rate themselves. And you made them invisible. I'll tell you, they were even on the court when they came out in the second half. Um, I might be a little better because I had them in the hostile takeover and, they, they did not stay within eight and a half points, obviously. Um, it was, it was a complete, just like a, a flip of switch or, or maybe, you know, Hurley is a great coach, by the way. He's looking at the players at halftime. He's like, all right, guys, stop messing around. It's within six, or seven points at halftime. Let's go be ourselves and just take care of business. And they listened to the coach and they turned it on. Um, Alabama, you've got to be focused. I mean, this is your first Final Four ever. It's something big, not, you know, NATO's. Congratulations for getting the tie there. It's a pretty huge accomplishment in Tuscaloosa. Um, your transition of being a basketball school is, is almost complete. Um, but you're going to have to play your best offensive game ever. I mean, RJ Davis was terrible for North Carolina. That gave you guys a chance to really pull away late. Um, I don't really see you on the offensive side laying down like Carolina did, unfortunately. You're going to have to find a way to score bucket for bucket and play at a high rate. And if you can keep it close, um, it'll be a successful night. But the way the UConn team is playing was a chance to win back-to-back national championships. Um, it kind of reminds me of when Georgia, in their second year, the first year they beat Alabama, kind of go over the, over the hump, won the title. In the second year, they were beating the trash of people, and TCU got it um, pretty good. Um, if UConn is in that same kind of mindset of they're going to go scorched earth, um, Alabama better watch out because this UConn team is very deep. Uh, might put it on. Um, I, I, I got a little Huskies to take down the tide. Uh, this team is just functioning on too many levels at a high rate. And the way that they play, the way they flow defensively, and their, their ability to score in transition is immaculate. Um, it, it, we're, we're looking at a UConn uh, uh, domination over Alabama. Really fresh. It, it's going to come down to Mark Sears. 
UConn did a phenomenal job at shutting down Terrence Shannon in the lead eight right there. And by doing that, you you held him to eight points in that game. He was awful on from the field. He was a terrible shooter. And it really threw Illinois off the entire game. They couldn't. He was their spark plug gear round. You know, when you needed a basket, he got it for you. And that didn't happen against this Connecticut team. And all of a sudden, the Connecticut Huskies just started running up and down. And it turned into an avalanche where you felt like you couldn't do anything right if you're Illinois. And you felt like you couldn't do anything wrong if you're UConn here. That cannot happen. Alabama cannot go on like eight even, and I don't expect them to go on a what an eight minute scoreless run, whatever it was, nine minute scoreless run, whatever Illinois went on. But I, I don't think Alabama can go on like a four minute scoreless run or a five minute scoreless run in this game because UConn will just destroy them. They they really will. This UConn team is just a complete team from top to bottom. They have a, a post presence. They have guard play. They have the young kids. They got the shooters. They got a little bit of everything on this offense here. And it makes it very, very difficult for them to be beaten. You're really going to have to play a perfect game to beat them. This is the type of game, though, I'm expecting Stephen Castle to pick up the freshman. I think that every team that is like UConn, there is a game where the freshman just goes off. You take a look at, uh, go back in the day with Carmelo Anthony when he was a freshman over there. You see that he only had, Castle only had two points against Illinois. He had 16 against San Diego State. He's been pretty inconsistent for this team. He's been kind of their fifth leading scorer on the, on the squad. This is the game. This is the, this would be a game where you could see him go off and really do a, a nice job contributing to pushing them to the championship. I got I got UConn in this game. They've covered every single spread going forward here. Actually, dating back to last year, they have covered ten straight tournament games since they've come in. I'm going UConn in the points in this game. I know I I got a feeling I'm going to be wrong on that. I don't. I think Alabama is going to figure out a way to get it. But you know what? I'm going UConn versus Purdue, set up that, that championship game, set up UConn versus uh, Edie and see if they got something for them. She covered 10 straight turn on game. That, that's, that's ridiculous, folks. Um, but you, you, you got to tip the cap. UConn is a program. It doesn't matter who the coach is, who the players are. And they, you know, I'll give it all and take them one, one a title. Obviously, you know, Coach Calhoun won titles. And now, Early is a chance to win too. Uh, this just a, it's a, a mentality they have there at, at, in UConn stores where they just put guys out, put them in the court, they blend them all together, and they go win great and they play great basketball. Um, can somebody take down this Husky team? Can they keep it close? Um, we'll, we'll see. They have lost. They're not undefeated. It, it has happened this season. They have lost a game. It can't happen. Yeah. All right, Fresh, you got it. NC State versus UConn in the championship game. Who you got winning it all? Husky State on the Nets. Uh, they don't cut them every tear them down. Uh, as much as the NC State and the great run that, that it's been, I, it would take a Herculean effort to get past Purdue and um, UConn. If they did, we could maybe even say that they're the best tournament team of all time. Um, Given all the expectations of who they had to be. But I think UConn is too strong, too good, and they're on a mission. Yeah, UConn has not lost the game since February 20th. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a tough road to hoe, my man. That is a tough road to hoe. And you know what, though? I'm going to regret this. I'm going to Purdue Boilermakers to cut down the nets. They're going to win the yeah. national title. Because here's the thing. Is that you going to give you some of that net when it cuts down and mail you a a little strip it? I wish. Here's what I'm going to say, Fresh. Everyone wants to point to all these defending national championship teams and and who they are and what they want to do. Um, For those of you who know, I do really thoroughly enjoy the history of basketball and different squads and different teams and stuff like that. 
And a lot of people were like, oh, well, the Florida Gators back when they repeated as national championship team and with Joe King Noah and um, Butler and, and all that uh, Brewer, Brewer, yeah, Brewer there on there. But this, what reminds me of this is I go back to a team like Arizona or Arkansas back in the 90s. They won national t- uh, uh, titles with that 40 minutes of hell offense and defense and, and just going ape on a team and winds up winning a national title. And then they wind up cruising, almost cruising back into championship game and facing up against a UCLA team that kind of survived as they went through there, uh, led by some seniors, led by Ed O'Bannon, Tyus Edney, uh, Charles O'Bannon was a sophomore, he had a freshman, great freshman, Toby Bailey. That squad winds up knocking off Arkansas in, in a really a great game, one of the better national title basketball games that you'll see in a long way. Uh, go back and look at that that game if you haven't ever seen it before. It's, it's a great one to watch. And it's a great thing to see Nolan Richardson, what he did with Arkansas. And people would be like, Arkansas, they weren't ever really a basketball school. They used to be folks, and they used to be a really, really damn good basketball school. So I, I just got a feeling that UConn may have like that Arkansas moment in the end while they've been dominant going through this tournament and finally going up against a team that can – kind of match up well with them. I think Purdue is, out of this entire tournament, Purdue is the best matched up team against the UConn Huskies. Uh, other people would say differently. Uh, again, Alabama might clip them, but I think Purdue's got the best chance. And again, I feel like I need to be a glutton for punishment. I'm going Purdue because I said that they'd be an early out. I mean, it's been, it's been a great run. All I can say is we're getting all four of these teams have Really intriguing stories, whether it's first time in over 40 years or ever, um, or we're going for a back-to-back title. Um, that's what makes this tournament special, folks. Every year, something completely different. You know, last year we had a couple of double digit seeds make the final four. This year we have one of them there. Um, it shouldn't change. Feel the 64. I like it. The 68 and kind of, you know, whatever, but it should not expand anymore. Keep it where it is. Do not limit. How, and how many non-Power 5 conferences get in. Keep the format the way it is. Do not touch it because this is what chaos ensues. It's the greatness of it. Nobody wants to see chalk. Um, chalk is boring. Yeah, it's a great regular season team, but the chaos fuels the energy for everybody. And what little man, what little team, what, you know, what a coach should have makes a charge. Um, and then everyone sort of jumps behind it. So keep the tournament the way it is. That's what fuels the entertainment and energy. Right. Absolutely. And hey, before we head out, make sure you guys leave us who you think is going to make it into the national championship and who is going to be your champion. So, Fresh, it's been a great run. It's awesome time. Awesome time to be alive. Make sure you guys are checking out SpinnableSports.com. And hey, hit that subscribe button and notification bell because... It's NFL draft season after next Monday. We're going to roll out some draft episodes for you. We got a full first round mock draft. We're going to be joined by some special guests along the way for that one. We also have different things coming out, whether or not breaking down teams, breaking down divisions, all sorts of that stuff. Fun times for the draft. And then we'll be in the month of May. And we'll be slowly moving to college football season all over again. The whole cycle, cycle of life starts again for a happy podcast episode but special thanks to our producer drew without him none of this is possible fresh like subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from leave us that five star review because you guys know fresh and i were those five star prospects that's all i got for tonight i don't got a whole lot more else everybody but just that draft season was get ready for all the content dive in spinnable sports.com spinnable sports youtube channel obviously us the irrational Conference podcast Pick us up, spread the word. We want to hear from you. We want good, bad, and different. Feel, feel, feel the energy on sports. Because before we know it, we're going to have a long, lost summer before football comes back. So let's enjoy April and May. We'll still have it. And with that, everybody, bye, y'all.